My talk will be on self-harm and what attendees can expect from that talk is a report on a project that we are doing um, uh, that is just beginning. Um, and what it is is that myself and a collaborator, William Gardner, have been really struck by the increase in the amount of self-harm that's going on with young adults. And so what we've done is we're just about to start a project where we're going to follow a group of these uh, young people um, for about six months intensively studying them. What are their triggers? What kinds of feelings do they have? What sort of problems um, do they experience? Why do they do it? How did they get the idea? The purpose of the study is really to generate hypotheses that we can go on and test in a larger study about what the nature of self-harm is. And the reason we're even asking this question is because years ago, when somebody came in and with self-harm, most of the time they would have had either a major mood disorder or they would have had maybe a substance use disorder or maybe psychosis. But these days we're seeing a lot of kids come in and they don't have any of these symptoms or they just have a few and it doesn't seem like the psychiatric illness is driving it. It seems like more it's almost an existential crisis that begins these kids in their self-harm behavior. The other thing that we think is probably going to turn out to be helpful is peer-to-peer -peer support. We certainly have a sense Again, it's speculation until we do this sort of new study, but we, have specula we can speculate that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interactions are some of what causes the problems to begin with in the sense of either stress from bullying or stress from exclusion or peers communicate the idea about starting to self-harm to begin with. So it only makes sense that we can use peers to perhaps either prevent or stop kids from self-harming. The things that we can do as a community that can stop self-harm or make it at least better is that parents can really help be on the lookout for their kids being extraordinarily stressed or excluded from their groups or feeling really bad about peer relations. In addition, we can as a community provide more activities for kids that are healthy as well as more physical activity and a lot of education about self-harm. And the final thing is that we could greet people's reports of their feelings that lead to self-harm with open engagement and problem solving rather than with horror or with um, a lot of drama uh, because sometimes what happens with the kids then is that they stop wanting to talk about it. So the best thing that we can do as a community is first of all we can find out which is what Dr. Gardner and I are trying to do what really makes this problem happen and what makes it persist and then in addition we can really bond together as a community to provide a warm and safe environment in which kids can actually learn how to cope with problems.